Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. We had a pretty dynamic first hour. There started off with Dr. Truat and, of course, continuing with Tim Alexander. Tim, there's a lot of hot issues going on here. We kind of opened up some very nasty cans of Mormon worms along with the Obama communist worms. And Well, I've got an even better one for you. This is I'll, you, always try to, you always try to top us, don't you, Tim? <laughs> Here, tell me, Tim. <laughs> well, what this, is is your... from Pre- this is from Press TV, and Press TV, you know, has just been banned uh, in Europe. Uh, it's, uh, it's from Iran. Now, uh, let me give you a little background. I mean, I've known very few Iranians. I did have an Iranian friend in grad school, but that was before the Iranian Revolution, which tells you how old I am. Uh, and um, But I'm not a supporter of uh, the mullahs and, and all that by any wild stretch of the imagination. But uh, I believe in freedom of the press. Uh, truth will come out. And uh, uh, I believe very much in in our founding fathers, and uh, freedom of the press was way up on the list of, uh, of yeah, things that uh, is is necessary to make a free, functioning democracy. Anyway, so they've tried to shut Press TV down, but Press TV site has this very interesting article. <laughs> Hot off the presses. U.S. military plan mutiny on the bounty to topple Obama. And I will say this for press TV. Sometimes they, they, they screw up. And, of course, they present the Iranian side. But overall, uh, I use them a lot. Of course, I use a lot of Israeli sites on my blog. But I uh, they do try. I mean, it, it's... Uh, uh, you know, like the Deepka has some good information, but they're also the voice of the facade, you know, and you really have to to be careful with them. The press TV, they do try to be uh, credible, okay? So this is a pretty incredible, and I, I suppose it's credible, uh, story. <laughs> You're working <laughs> your way up to it, Tim. <laughs> yeah, okay. The, nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read part of this because I, I, I can't do You this, probably can't uh, believe it unless you actually read it, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me start here. The Obama administration has had American military both on domestic and foreign bases on high alert since October the 1st. However, there have been no known terrorist enemy threatening uh, the U.S. The enemy is called domestic, but its origins are far from American. Today, Rear, Ad- Rear Admiral Charles M. Goulet was fired from his command as one of the three carrier battle groups and sent back to Bremington, Washington to face an investigation. It is impossible to adequately state how unusual this is and how serious, and that, by the way, is the gospel truth. Okay, the Navy was clear that the charges had nothing to do with his personal conduct, no rape or sexual misconduct, no stolen money, no drug use, the things that usually bring down careers in the Navy, and that and crashing ships into one another. Uh, Gillette was sent back because the Secretary of Defense found him unfit for command, sent him across the world in the middle of one of the largest combat exercises in history, one both time prior to an election and one at a critical location near the Straits of Hormuz in the Persian Gulf. Gillette commanded nearly one-third of the naval and air combat forces in the region. Uh, he had a command of a supercarrier uh, combat group. That's uh, four or five destroyers and cruisers, uh, one or two nuclear submarines, support ships, and, of course, a supercarrier. So, the, the, okay. in other words, you're dealing with a very high-level naval uh, officer. You're, you're, you're dealing with more firepower than any any nation had in all of World War II, because, remember, we're talking about... Under, under this one man, and now he's being hauled on the mat because of what? Right. Right. Well, <laughs> uh, it, it, I I haven't got into this yet because I knew there was a heck of a story, but I, I, I did know the details. I didn't want to speculate too much. Okay, let me go on and continue reading. Uh-huh. The decision was based on a conversation with the Secretary of Defense, who at the end of the talk believed Gallette was part of a group of military officers who have been under suspicion for planning a seven days in May type overthrow of the U.S. government if President Obama is reelected. This is not conjuncture. Dozens of key officers facing firing, face firing. Hundreds are under investigation, all with direct ties to extremist element, uh, 
in the Republican Party and the Israeli lobby. And that's the key, the Israeli lobby here. Reports are re- received or sourced at the highest levels of the Pentagon and indicate that the administration has been aware of these plans for months. It's not just the Obama administration happened before, and then it goes into the story about the Murat Air Force Base and, you know, the broken arrow, the missing uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, Now, so end of of my quoting from the story. Is this what happened? Well, I don't know. I do know that you don't, while in the middle of a military exercise, uh, on the cusp of a possible third world war, you don't yank uh, one of your top commanders off of uh, his his uh, supercarrier and fly him home for no good reason. Uh, something very strange went down. I think we were very. I think the plan was to have uh, a a war erupt, but something's happened. To there's been some monkey wrenches thrown in that. I would figure uh, that they would be remember like. Remember, we uh, also to, replaced a to, general uh, in in Libya. Tim, what I think may, may have, you're, you're getting at here is what recently happened was an, an attempted attack. What it appears to be Mossad trying to kill General Dempsey. And uh, what well, this that is may have, uh, that uh, that also has happened within uh, roughly the last month. Right, there's and what, what I'm saying here is that I think weird that, thing. So, in other words, there, there's a connection here. The, the, I guess you're trying to draw it to Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> here's the problem. We have, I, basically, I have we have a mutiny on the bounty. We have, a, we have, to have people that are saying, we're not going to war there, Mr. President Obama. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do this to get you reelected. It could be. Uh, it... it, it uh, <laughs> Look, I, I've known a number of, of people that wear stars on their shoulder, and I would say this is something that most one, two, and even many three stars are probably out of the loop on. This is a four-star thing and maybe a three-star. This is what they call them elephants in the Pentagon. Oh, yeah. And I'm not sure exactly where all the tentacles lie, where all the, the, power, the, the strings lead to, but... There have been several things that have gone down over the last month that are really big red flags. But when you look at them from the outside, you say, could that be? No, it could be. That, you, know, you don't know for sure. So I'm, I'm very reluctant to, to – to, I go out on a, on a limb all the time, but I'm very reluctant to go out too far. Now, this is an article, and it, it, it has given a one interpretation – of what went down, or at least part of it. I don't know. I can't tell you. But I I do know that we are poised, either before or after the election, for something that could well be the Third World War. I also know that, uh, and I, I read you this earlier today when we were talking Netanyahu's latest comment, that an Israeli strike on uh, Iran's nuclear facilities would have a calming effect on the Middle East. It's <laughs> like, well, so, how big yeah. of lie can we make up? Uh, and that, that, I think that, he just that, broke yeah. the record, you know? That, that's uh, a land speed record, too. It's like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> a land speed record. I, I, I give a, a once in a blue moon, I, I have a, uh, a, uh, a BS flag award. And you know what the BS stands for. But anyway, and uh, the highest is a five-star. I think I may put like a 50-star. I may fill a page with <laughs> my BS flag. I mean, that, oh, no. uh, yeah, uh, uh, an Israeli strike uh, on Iran will definitely calm the Middle East. Absolutely, that it got them. Well, I guess it will calm it back after a few billion years. <laughs> yeah, when it, the plutonium decays. Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Back in a moment. Welcome back. And so here's the story. The Chinese basically have said, 
you need to move into the orbit of Iran. So what's really going on right now? And I know there's people listening, including my friend Jerry Strybos, hopefully he's listening to the program. He's working as a professional trainer with a billionaire from Saudi Arabia. They're only, luckily, only so many months of the year there. They're often in near Nice, France, or they're elsewhere. Uh, Riyadh is going to get whacked. It's right in the Bible by Iran. Uh, Saudi Arabia is going to get whacked by Iran. It's just going to happen. We know that there's going to be a great war between Sunni and Shiite Islam. It's right there. We talked well, about the Saudis this earlier. have some nukes. They, they, they paid yeah. for the, uh, most of the Pakistani program, and they have some Chinese IRBM uh, right. intermediate range ballistic missiles with, with nuclear warheads on them. Right. Uh, so the, the Saudis have a, a, are right. a nuclear power. Now, Bill Salas will be on tomorrow, and we're going to talk about his latest book. The talks about this specifically gives the biblical and the geopolitical references. And I know as a history, history professor and as a geopolitical analyst, you can see this coming. A war between Sunni and Shiite Islam is literally right on the edge. Well, but, you know, this is what Israel wants, too. I mean, this is, this is all part of... Uh, oh, of course. I and mean, the globalists... The globalist, uh, uh, many of whom uh, claim to be uh, so vehemently Zionist, are really setting Israel up to be destroyed because they want their third world war so that they can s consolidate uh, their new world order and eliminate most of the population because they want about a half a billion people instead of seven billion people. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, two things we need to discuss. We, we, you, a lot of the conversation about Egypt was, was off the air. Um, thirty some years ago, uh, the United States uh, bribed the Egyptian uh, government uh, to move away from the Soviet Union and into the American orbit by saying we'll put a billion or a billion and a half dollars a year into your country. We did the same thing, but with a smaller amount of money with Jordan, and you'll have a peace treaty with Israel. You won't be on the verge of war with Israel and every year we're going to we're going to fund you and the boys at the top can rake in you know a nice percentage into their Swiss bank accounts and the military is going to get all kind of nice toys some F16s and some M1A1 main battle tanks and so forth and that that has kind of been the way things have happened and then, of course, the CIA and the Mossad started the Arab Spring, and, and you had the now the uh, the Islamic Brotherhood has has moved in, and and so forth. But now the Chinese have come in with a couple hundred billion dollars, and they they kind of outbid us, and they did what we did, the Soviets. Uh, and now it's uh, you need to, to be dealing with Iran, and uh, we can build factories, and we can bring an insane amount of money into Egypt. And uh, so that's what's going down there. Now, by the and way, by the way, this whole plan with the uh, Saudi Arabians was hatched with the Saudis, which are integrated with the Israeli Mossad and the CIA and MI5, MI6, and the British bankers. Yeah. And the meeting was three and a half years ago in New York City with the social networking groups like Twitter, Facebook, yeah. and by the way, Zuckerberg of Facebook, I'm yeah. going to repeat this, is just the face of Facebook. It was invented by the No Such Agency or the NSA. These people had, need to understand the global. Yeah, you know, he, people need to really understand dollar, the, what, what's going on is a manipulation. And of all these people to, to, and of course, when they were speculating on food with all of the QE1 and QE2 and the collapse of the economy after 2008, it's not surprising they couldn't afford to feed themselves because the European community told the Egyptians, you can't have a diversified economy where you can provide all your own food and wheat and so on. You need to produce fruit for a European sale for exchange with the euro. So they forced the European, the uh, Egyptians into becoming dependent on international trade. And they, they blocked them from from being independent and being able to, because they could grow their own crops. Uh, so they would have a fully integrated economy. Um, and this is all by design. Now, of course, Egypt is falling into the alignment, uh, even though they're part of this Muslim Brotherhood, into the alignment with Iran. And that's really freaking out the Saudis who now, and the Qataris and the Arab Emirates, because they're funding terrorists to come in and kill people in Syria. And you were the first to break this story, Tim, because you had this pastor from Chicago that's the Eastern Orthodox who went and specifically talked to Assad as this whole thing started over a year ago. Tell us about that story, because people need to get this perspective. Well, I, I, yeah, I, you know, uh, the, uh, the Antiochian Archdiocese in the United States, uh, Eastern Orthodox, 
uh, they uh, have many people in the Middle East, and uh, many of their parishioners have aunts or uncles or cousins in the Middle East, and they were getting reports from Syria that everything the media was saying about uh, the ongoing uh, uh, insurrection was a lie, that the people were almost overwhelmingly behind the government, that these were foreigners coming in, and uh, the Christians were being targeted by them, and so forth and so forth. So... They, uh, the the archbishop uh, here, he wanted to, to, to find out. Well, he wanted his own uh, people to go, and they sent uh, a number of people. Uh, one of the days I took over for you, uh, uh, I interviewed uh, this priest. Uh, uh, actually, he's of Irish descent, but he's an Eastern Orthodox priest. And uh, he went with the group. Uh, he runs a magazine uh, for the church, and they went over, and they were allowed to go anywhere. Anywhere. They told him they were fight, was fighting in a couple places. You shouldn't go there, but you know they didn't tell him they couldn't. And he had uh, dinner and sat right next to Assad. And uh, they were getting feedback, not just the official feedback, but feedback from parishioners over there. People from they were getting the real, the real thing. And basically, what he said is, is, is this was all you know, this was all foreigners coming. In. This was foreign money. That, that there was no. Uh, demand on the part of of the Syrian people for revolution. In fact, the country was one of the most uh, one of the safest countries uh, in, in, on earth in terms of crime and everything else. Of course, now you, 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 they've been pouring, uh, you know, they've been paying uh, fighters from uh, fifty to one hundred fifty thousand dollars to go in and fight. They've been attacking Christians. Uh, raping people, killing people, and I'm talking men, women, children, babies, and so forth. And uh, literally, people are being martyred because they're Christians. And and NATO money is going to support this. And NATO, right. I mean, and of course, I, this I, is, other this than is, Turkey, every country in NATO is a Christian country. And how can we sit on our butts and let something like that happen with our well, tax yeah, dollars yeah. to be killing people because they're Christians? Right. Well, my, my ancestors on my mother's side were originally Kohenic Jews, or Hebrews, because the tribe of Joseph is not, they're not Jews, they're, they're Ephraimites, or the tribe of Joseph. And they were Orthodox from Lebanon. And the fact is, what's going on there is a Holocaust against Christians, supported by our government, that's supporting Al-Qaeda and these terrorists to kill Christians. That's obscene, and uh, it's backfiring because they now they don't know they don't have enough people to actually overturn the regime. They know the Russians have said no. They put the S three hundred S four hundred system. We did an excellent analysis of that. Yeah, the, uh, they, the, the, the 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 rumor is, by the way, Doctor Bill, uh, the rumor in intelligence and military and defense circles is that Iran has now been supplied with the S four hundred. Uh, air defense system, which is probably the best system on Earth. Amazing. We come back, we'll do more analysis and tie it into the election, or should I say the selection, coming up. Welcome back, and uh, Tim Alexander, uh, we're dealing with some significant problems. We've got corruption in the medical system, corruption in the political system. We have a selection where we're given two Hobson's Choice alternatives. And I have to say, uh, people may gag, but you absolutely, uh, not voting is voting for Obama. And uh, voting for Romney is, as I say, voting for Obama is a stroke and you'll be dead in the morning. Voting for Romney is, well, you probably got cancer, but you might survive with the right therapy, which means a hell of a lot of prayer and also witnessing to people to make sure they don't turn Mormon because they think, well, we have a Mormon president. It must be a wonderful religion. No, it's not. It's, it's satanic. It's not Christianity. It's not Christianity, but it's actually clearly satanic. Now, you can have moral people in the Mormon church, just like you can have moral Buddhists and moral people that are that call themselves Muslims, even though the Quran is devilishness. Okay, so there's good people everywhere, but the fact is they're good by, how can I say, a twist of fate and circumstances. The fact is that Mormon, Mormonism is very dangerous. And uh, the Dark Alliance is well, made between... Well, I believe it was, was founded by, by a small group of old men who wanted a bunch of young women in the harem and to police various other people out of every penny they could. 
and I think history substantiates the the, the, the history of the Mormon Church. Yeah. It's substantiated by that. Uh, and I, it's a made up religion. It's all based on lies and the exploitation of of, of young women uh, for your your own little personal harem. Yeah. Uh, but, but by the way, I, we, I, we need to cover something. The, yeah, let's, let's get into the that. Israeli Air Force uh, about three days ago launched a an attack on the the Republic of Sudan, uh, bombed a large factory, and uh, they used American-supplied F-15s and probably F-16s. Uh, depending on which report you want to hear, there were either four F-15s that went in or something like eight. Uh, there were probably some top cover things too so it, it's hard to say exactly how many but anyway they they tore the place up pretty pretty good now it's speculated that uh the iranians were building some uh, medium range missiles there anyway the uh, iranians have now dispatched a frigate and a corvette uh to sudan uh or so uh, and uh, anyway Israel now has sent two warships through the uh, Suez Canal along with a French warship under very tight security. So there is a possibility that we're, we may be seeing a Israel versus Iran. Yeah, but wait, how can they prosecute a war? They can't stop Hezbollah with anti-tank missiles. You pointed it out, Tim, in South yeah. Lebanon. How the hell are they going to prosecute a war? Fifteen hundred. Well, the latest away. is they say that they're not going to use uh, uh, near as many cluster bombs. Uh, the next battle they get into with Hezbollah, the last time they used uh, cluster bombs that uh, looked like toys, so little kids would pick them up and blow their arms and hands off. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got. You got to uh, understand that the, the the rogue nation of Israel is. It's like the fig tree without fruit on it that Jesus saw that was cursed. There needs to be a lot of repentance on the part of Jews, and there will be, because God, Jesus and God have promised in the Bible that a large percentage of Jews are going to repent uh, at the time of the end, during the time of Jacob's trouble. That's coming. And if this is true, which I believe it probably is with Romney, we're probably looking at a situation where, you know, if, if the powers that be have their way, Obama's history... Apparently, according to uh, the latest reports I've seen, including over the weekend, Obama's bought a uh, multi-million dollar home in Hawaii. Well, you know, they're apparently moving like the 10th of January, 2013. Sure sounds sounds like he's uh, already preparing his exit plan. You know, that's his golden parachute. Uh, Well, the Bible code, and you, you have to take it with a grain of salt because it's usually interpreted by, by rabbis in, in Israel. But the Bible code, uh, what I've read, uh, clearly says that Romney will be the victor. Um, now, for the listeners that don't know what the Bible code is, in the first uh, five books of the ancient uh, Hebrew Bible, the Torah, um, Sir Isaac Newton, you know, the guy, the apple saw the apple fall on his head and, and right. figured out gravity and all that. One of the great geniuses of the late, uh, well, early Renaissance, late Middle Ages. Sir Isaac Newton uh, actually spent most of his time working on deciphering what he felt was a hidden code in the first uh, five books of the Bible. And we now know from using computers and skip tracing algorithms that there is a code in the Bible. Uh, it's difficult sometimes to interpret it, but the mathematical probability of it being randomness uh, is absolutely astronomical. So we know that there is a Bible code. By the way, uh, and this comes from uh, a lot of Jewish rabbis in Israel, it's very clear the, uh, it says that uh, uh, Jesus, uh, Yahshua, is the Messiah, is the Son of God. And it says that multiple times. Uh, but anyway, uh, the Bible code supposedly does indicate that Romney is, is going to win this. But it also says that during the time of Netanyahu, a, a horrific war uh, will basically destroy Israel. And uh, a lot of people... Well, if they start any kind of war, they're going to get destroyed. Uh, scenario number A. Uh, 
uh, Iran and and uh, and Saudi Arabia go at it, and Israel, of course, gets involved in this mess, which is real stupid. They have Hezbollah and all of these missiles rain down on them, which they can't stop with Iron Dome and their Patriot II Well, they can try, and, but they can't begin to stop most well, of them. And, it's like bailing a boat with a very leaky sieve. I mean, you're not going to yeah. bail very well. <laughs> so they're not going to stop a lot of these you're, missiles. The bucket you're bailing with has holes on the bottom. And the, well, last, and the, last week the they did a test. In very fast. They did a missile test last week, and they batted themselves in the back that they knocked four out of five missiles when they knew they were coming and said, that's not good, guys. Instead How of, about if there's 500 coming every hour? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I made the statement, and I've done it before, so people kind of get the message because I talked specifically face-to-face -face with one of the senior engineers at U.S. Space Command doing the missile test at White Sands Missile Base and Vandenberg Air Force Base here in California when they launched missiles, both land-launched and sea-launched, including cruise missiles. They said, if you know it's coming, how accurate are you? He said, well, this is back in the mid-90s. Well, about 70%. That's just that's not bad, you know. Missile yeah, but they missile. but they put radar de, uh, reflectors on the the incoming warheads too. Right now, here's what happened. I said, when will it be really good? So you can have all kinds of radar evading technology and everything, and you can get 100 percent of the missiles. He said, ah, oh, it'll cost about 70, 73 trillion with a T, <laughs> and it'll take to 2045. I said, my gosh, what you've done is create a financial black hole. And he put on this kind of evil snicker. He said, yeah. I said, this is. I said, here's the problem. You got you got congressmen and senators. And busy for a long you got congressmen and senators and so on making and, and military people that may not know better making policy based on a stupid system and I, I don't want to give the level levels of it we've got uh, a plasma system like the Tesla system that can superheat the atmosphere to create a plasma barrier to a missile and actually fry its electronics as it comes in from deep, from uh, near space we've got uh, chemical laser systems that can be in high altitude aircraft and go hundreds of miles and zap out a missile hit its uh, payload uh, uh, system there before it actually you know hits its targets or even separates its missiles out. Well, We've got the, the launch engineered fire. I mean, yeah, we got we got the launch phase theater air defense, which I'm very familiar with because they gave me a media presentation July 10th, 1994, underground at the media center in Falcon Street Air Force Base. I, I, but the fact is, if this system doesn't work, as I said, what it means is instead of 12 really deads, you're 11 really deads. <laughs> and, you know, th this is stupid beyond belief. And the problem is, you see, the military, industrial, intelligence, financial complex are lying to the powers that be, and they're believing this foolishness that somehow they can actually prosecute a war. If Israel starts any war, I don't care if they've got 800 or 1,200 nuclear missiles, they're annihilated. It says that the time, at this time that the blood of the citizens of Israel will rise to the horse's bridles. That means a horse is pretty tall. That means the blood is going to rise right There's up to the... There's something like 150,000 missiles and rockets aimed at Israel. And I don't care how many anti-missiles they've got. They can't yeah. stop all that. But, Tim, you, you say, you, did you say 150 mil, uh, missiles or 150,000? 150,000, not millions. Thousand. That's a we lot might of missiles. Well, it 150 million because after, you know, after you knock down the 10,000, the rest of you Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, tell us very much. Let's uh, speculating on a timeline here, and again, speculation. And if I knew something prophetic about this, I'd say it, but I don't. Uh, so don't say I'm right or wrong. I'm just speculating. If I was going to put my bets, uh, I would bet slightly on now. I used to bet on Obama. I would bet slightly on Romney. I'd say he's got about a sixty. I'd say about a sixty-five percent chance now he's going to be. It's going to be a Romney presidency. If it's an Obama presidency, there's three things that have to take place. Number one, voter fraud. Number two, the storm that they actually parked over the uh, battleground states to, to sink the the, the surging yeah, Harp was, Romney Harp tide. Yeah, working on that storm. That's not a Harp, Harp and space space lasers, yeah. So I would think that this would tilt toward uh, Obama with this uh, storm park there because it takes the steam out of the uh, major surge in Ohio and You know, Paul elsewhere. Martin and I were talking about it. Paul has a, 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 a radio show and a, and a really good uh, news blog, and we were talking about that today. And mm -hmm. I'm sure Paul's listening. I hope he doesn't mind me yeah. mentioning his name. But, uh, you know, it's sometimes hard to say who actually that benefits. 
I think no. I think uh, if, I, if I, I spent some time pray, in prayer and uh, analysis, initially, of course, if you have low voter turnout in general and historically, it tends to favor Republicans because they're more likely to show up, even if it's bad weather. But in this situation, it's so bad, uh, and because we don't have a direct contact, you know, people need to see Romney. First off, he presents himself as a moral. Pretty conservative, regular guy. But again, you know, it's like Dr. Romney and Mr. Hyde. You don't know who you're really going really to get. And uh, I know he's looked in the past. I, I tend to believe that at the moment, again, remember, he has probably Mormon MPD or multiple personality disorder. Uh, you may not get a pro-life Romney. You may not, as he said, one of the campaign speech. Uh, you know, I don't know of well, any we, bills. We, I think, we elected I think a, uh, a Obama that was going to end uh, <clears throat> get mo. It was going to end all the wars and uh, give us a good economy. Did we get any of that? Well, not only that, he actually outpushed Bush. I mean, uh, his <laughs> one of his favorite things to do is he doesn't show up in the Situation Room for all the briefings and so on, but he sure as hell is going to show up on Tuesday to make sure they go over the baseball cards of death. So uh, yeah, he. They, I understand he he really gets a kick. And out by, of by the way, here's what they do: ninety percent of the people that die are relatives or other people that are just bystanders. And what they do is their second strike, which always occurs, kills the people trying to rescue them or the responders, i.e. the ambulance attendants, the nurses, the people in the military trying to save those people that are blasted to pieces. That's pretty nice of us, you know. And, you know, you get a population, for example, like in Egypt or in Iran, which basically are pretty westernly oriented, and now you start them out with an act of war, which is a you know, total blockade. Dr. How many countries are we killing people in? Well, not just killing them. We're killing them by starvation. Now in Iran, probably within a matter of three to six months, Iran is going to decay to the point where they're not going to be able to well, functionally buy staples. Yeah, exactly. But what what's going to result of that, of course, is that Russia and their S-400 system is going to start knocking our jets out. And I think, and I visualize this, I had this kind of vision a number of times, where I can visualize a Syrian guy, kind of chunky military kind of looking guy with a big mustache, getting up some morning really, really early, and he's got a hangover because he's had this party, and they've been cursing and swearing at, at America and the West and what they're doing and funding all these terrorists. And he gets out in the missile battery, and he's been trained now for months by the Russians. He's a smart guy, sitting there, and he's still half cut from the previous night, and he decides he's going to launch this missile battery of Yakan's hypersonic cruise missiles. And the carrier group's not even going to see it. It's like 10 feet off the water. Our radar systems are not even going to detect it because... These things are going to just be slightly over the nose of bottled dolphins. They're not going to see these things coming, are they? At and when three they, times the speed of sound or three and a half times the speed of sound. Right. When they come whipping in, they're going to punch the hole through the side of our carrier groups and our destroyers, and we're going to see a lot of sailors eating their morning porridge and having their eggs and, and dunking their donuts, and they're going to be dunked in the water without their, their wetsuit on or their life jacket. And no, we're going to a lot of people, killed, and we have a lot of women now on, on board. Right, we're going to have a lot of people die, and then it's all hell is going to break loose. The other carrier group is going to scramble jets, and they're going to try to come into come into Syrian airspace or Iranian airspace, and you're going to start seeing uh, Russian S-400 and S-300 systems now in place, knocking our jets out of the sky. This is going to get really ugly. Yeah, well, the S-400 is an incredible system, and it can knock down incoming ICBMs. And it's land mobile. It's very hard to hit. It's very hard to take out. And, and traditionally, when they put that system in, they put the various other missiles to protect it. And uh, uh, I would, I would guarantee, I put money on it that the Russians have already done it. I guarantee it. I will put money on it. I can well, visualize the Chinese co-developed the the S four hundred. With right. the Russians, so if the Russians did, right. the Chinese did. But well, if the Chinese look, are already saying to to the Egyptians, we we're we're going to pop in two hundred billion dollars and build one hundred fifteen factories, but be buddies with Iran. You know, Saudi Arabia, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere within a hundred mile radius of Riyadh. If you're an American there, get the hell out, because Riyadh's going to get hit with a missile, and it could be a Shahid missile flying in there, or eventually the Russians saying, oh, "How the hell with these guys down Saudi Arabia? They're the ones causing all this trouble." It's the Saudis, the Qataris, and the and the uh, Arab Emirates. That's what's going on. I I I've told people for some time it's best to be gone from the Middle East because the you can you can't predict the timing, but you can see the flow of. You can, yeah, exactly. I don't know the date, but I can tell you the very first vision I had in 1988 when I was given clay and iron was a vision taken high up above the earth 
uh, several hundred miles and looking down over the Strait of Hormuz. And I was told by the angel, when you see the Strait of Hormuz close, this is the beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah, well, I haven't Whoa. had uh, your visions, but I can guarantee you, Bill, that well, it fits I, the facts. It fits I, I, the... I see the, the, the flow of military, political, and geopolitical well, the, the, events mi- going that exact way. In the middle, the, the Iranian oil minister basically said, if we continue to have any more sanctions against us, we're closing the strait, which means they're going to close their, their waterways. And all they need to do is make a phone call or a public declaration, and the insurance companies are going to say, we're not insuring your tankers if you decide to go through the uh, the Persian Gulf. Super tankers are not built to take missile impact. No, they would uh, make a very large mess, and it wouldn't be just a matter of a few uh, advanced uh, you know, depth charges that are laid across the strait, which is only one and a quarter miles. If you had a large super tanker leaking oil like crazy there on you, fire, you can literally shoot a twenty two across that strait at certain places. A right. So right. what would happen is you, right. you'd have a situation where you can guarantee there won't be oil coming out of there for many months. Oh, at least. Right. And with three to five hundred dollar oil already in a depression, what would happen then? Well, we got net coming up twenty thirteen. We've got the fiscal cliff coming up. We have this thing where they're going to withdraw $500 billion additionally from the military, which weakens their military, in the old use it or lose it kind of story. And then we have, on top of that, the highest peak period during 2013-2014 of solar coronal mass ejections and this giant comet that's likely to trigger a major uh, CME around October or November of next year. Well, uh, but, but e- e- even without that, let, let's, you know, we've lost... Over 50,000 factories. Uh, we're still losing uh, multiple large factories every week. Uh, and that's by, by design, by the way. Sure it is. Uh, you know, I, I teach uh, college students, and, and I said, if you really, really tried really hard, do you think you'd get a, a job for $10 an hour? And almost all of them say no. Well, so they're staying know, in college because they can't get a job. 40 hours a week is $400 a week. That's right. uh, sixteen hundred dollars a month. Try to raise a family on that. Try to buy a house. Try to buy a car. So so, try to feed your kids. What they're doing is they're staying at school because they don't have to pay their student loan. <clears throat> they're living with their parents or relatives, and they're basically now taking off the voter uh, the, the list for for people that are unemployed because they're not seeking unemployment. But the reality is, is there's eighty nine million four hundred and some <clears throat> thousand people of working age in America <clears throat> without employment, without any employment and many tens of millions with part-time employment, and many tens of millions with full-time employment, that they, they don't make enough to survive. That's why you have so many people well, on food stamps. But we haven't seen the worst of it. My prediction oh, no. is food prices no, are going to go up seen, because of the... We haven't the, seen the <clears throat> crash. Well, the corn gate, which Obama refuses to turn corn back into a food for animals, which is why they're slaughtering animals like crazy, we have on top of that the food crisis where food all over the world is crashing in terms of production. I predict 50 to 100% increase in food prices next year. The well, fiscal cliff, the military disaster. Death. Genetically modified <clears throat> carn is sterilizing the human race. Yeah, and, and, and between, and by the way, this is going to happen with either Romney or Obama. There's going to be an, a, a, some kind of attempted attack, although it's going to go sorely wrong. They vastly underestimate the Russians and Chinese and the, and the forces in the area, which is why they thought it was going to be easy to knock off Syria. No. You're not dealing no, with 18 different work. tribal groups. It, Ain't going to work. The two hardest people on earth, and I repeat it, are the Syrians and the Russians. You mess well, with them. we need to they, get right with God because God is their only hope. Yeah, we are moving very quickly to the time of Jacob's trouble. And if the blood oath has been sworn by the... Uh, new uh, about to be selected president Romney we may be dealing with the peace treaty and the final time of Jacob's trouble coming very soon